what's on the menu for tonight at the uh, Two Cooks in the Kitchen Kitchen. So uh, here's the deal on this. This is a rack that uh, I bought, you know, just at Costco. It's an Australian lamb rack. It comes all trimmed and everything already. They cost about 20 bucks for one of these. It used to be a couple bucks less and there was bigger meat, but that's how it is. You just have to accommodate for that for cooking. So anyway, this is going to be a garlic rosemary rubbed uh, rack of lamb that I'm gonna cook in the oven. So for starters, I'm just gonna set that aside and I'm going to put in my little blender here, my little Barbie blender we call it because of the pink. Um, some garlic, just mini cloves of garlic, you know, however you want. Throw those in there. I went out in the garden and got a little bit of rosemary. I've taken it off the stems. This is like a little, low, little, little over half of a quarter of a cup. So it's like a little over an eighth of a cup, I guess that would be. So I'm gonna put that in here. And then two tablespoons of olive oil. Now, I have done this without one of these choppers before. We were in a vacation rental house. I had a garden that had uh, Costco where we buy the lamb and it had, uh, in the garden it had um, rosemary. So we just got some rosemary out of the garden and I just, you know, chop, 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 chop. It was a pain in the butt, but uh, it's possible. So you don't have to have one of these blenders. So I'm gonna get this chopped up real quick. It down in there a little bit. I'm supposed to do this until it's uh, fairly finely chopped garlic and the rosemary too. I think I want a little more oil in there just so that it turns into a nice gooey thing. That's good enough. We're gonna call that good enough. So let's let this set aside for just a second here. <clears throat> it's kind of big chunks, but that's fine. We like it. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to season the rack with some salt and pepper first. So I'm just going to do this this way. Season everywhere on here. It's always kind of tricky. I don't keep my stuff in a bowl like the fancy cooking show people do, all ready to go, so I'm just guessing. Okay, it's that side. Tongue tongs. Oops, close call. Okay, see how nice and meaty that is? So this is where all the meat's gonna be, is this section here. That's the main meaty part. And even though we probably aren't gonna eat much on this section, I'm still gonna season it. They're all up. Hmm? I take all the flavor off the bones. Yes. Huh? Yeah, you do. You you really eat the bones. I huh? chew on my bones. <laughs> okay. Just like a good puppy. Yeah. You do. All right. So now, before I put the uh, boy, I made a nice mess, huh? Cooking like Mr. Cook. So now I'm going to move this uh, rack to a pan, which I've lined with foil. Let's get rid of this. Uh, I lined it with foil and I have sprayed it. Uh, the reason I, I have a little story about this, the reason I use a metal pan is that we're going to cook this at 450. Um, I cooked this one time at my daughter's house in her nice glass Pyrex dishes and I took it out of the oven to turn it and BAM! The Pyrex dish just, it totally exploded everywhere. So from then on, I only use, no. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to start with that fat part down uh, let's see. Yeah, that's right. To put this goo on there because I want to turn it over one time to do the other side and then that's where it's going to sit. It's going to just sit for um, an hour with this stuff on it before we cook it. So let's see if I can kind of evenly divide this, sort of. Okay. Save the rest for the side. Gonna rub this in this meat as much as I can. You see? Shadow on you. Okay. 
So then I'm going to turn it over and put the rest of this on the other side. This is so easy. I am the one that does the super simple and quick and delicious recipes. I leave all that complicated stuff up to my husband. So, rub this on here, this is the good part. Maybe a little on the ends. And then that's it for right now. We're just gonna let this sit for an hour <clears throat> before we put it in the oven. And we'll get to that part a little bit later after I have my martini. Okay, so the oven is at 450 and it's just bingle bong that it's 450. So I'm gonna put this in the oven now. I've got the uh, top rack and the top one third of the oven. And I'm gonna put it in here. Bam. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in for 15 minutes because that fat side needs to kind of get, uh, get like kind of rendered and uh, a little crunchy on that one side because we're gonna flip it over after that uh, first time's up. Okay, stand by. Okay, so the timer is going off here. I'm gonna pull this thing out, bring it over here. See, that's looking pretty good. Look how that's sizzling up nice. Looks good. I'm just gonna flip this over now, just like that. Look how beautiful that looks. And I'm gonna put this, uh, because it's small, like I said, I'm gonna put it back in the oven now for eight minutes on this side. And uh, come back to pull it out for resting when the time comes up. Okay, time's up. I'm gonna just consider this done. I go with my gut, you know. Some people cook with everything by the rules and I just go with my instincts. So that looks really beautiful. Ah, hot. That's 457. Let me look at that. So now I'm gonna put this over here on the cutting board and cover it with some foil. And we're gonna let it rest oh, for about 10 minutes. It's supposed to be about 135. 145 um, temperature. You want it to be um, like medium rare, like pretty red in the middle, really. That makes the best. My mouth's watering thinking about it. And then let me show you what else I've been doing over here. Come over here. So we've really found that cutting corn, fresh corn off the cob, sauteing it. I've got some uh, mushrooms I chopped up and some carrot. I just went with what I have and I cooked that in some ghee. And then I added some, uh, a little bit of Slug slime from our local Los Bagels. It's really got a nice little crunch to it. And I've just, I've been, um, it's all cooked up right now. Now it's just kind of holding. I'm gonna put the timer on for 10 minutes, by the way, for that resting time for the lamb. So we'll come back when that's rested and we get ready to cut it up and show you how it came out. Let's cross our fingers that it's the right temperature. Hmm. Okay, it's a great reveal now. So. I'm going to uh, see how this is going to be. So just so you know, it is a little bit of a struggle for me sometimes to, to, cut this, to cut this up to get between the bones. So it looks pretty good. So here we go. So there's a trick to this that I haven't completely nailed yet, but there's a little spot when you cut down through here that, to get it to go all the way through. Oh, found it like that. It's a twist. It's a little twist, yeah. To the... Well, that one just... It actually is working better <laughs> with my nice knife. Nope. Yeah, where is it? So Matthew's pointing out that my nice new sharp knife... See, that looks pretty Ooh, good. yeah. The little pinker is perfectly good, too. But I'll tell you what. This is so delicious like this, it doesn't really matter. Oh, where is it? Here we go. It's to your left. Oh, <laughs> it's my timer because I was already done. I just thought I was done resting. So, here we go. Let's see. It's all messy. That's beautiful. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It, you know, once again, it could have been a little bit less, but depends on how you feel about it. You know, we like, we like where we're okay with that. So the nice thing about this is it can be plated really um, in a nice way. Do it well. <laughs> you can do it right. You want three pieces? Sure. Okay. So we're gonna go like 
you know, something. There we go. You want the end? Yeah, okay. end's good, huh? Okay, we'll go like this. I'm gonna go with this little baby one and these two guys. <laughs> Basically, we just kind of pick these up and eat them like lollipops. Okay, there's that. A little bit greasy. And then I'm going to bring on our veg. We don't usually have a lot of, um, you know, starchy thing. Like you can have mashed potatoes. That'd be really good. Um, maybe some bread. Yeah, garlic bread. Yeah, but we mm -hmm. don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> That's not going to be happening. Not around right here. So I'm just going to dish up lots of veg because that's what we eat a lot of. And you know, a little sprig of um, rosemary for a garnish would be nice. But this will be just fine. Well, listen to me scraping my pan with a metal fork, metal utensil. But it's okay. Okay, look at that. That's it. So, I'm not gonna take a bite right now because we're gonna go sit in front of the TV and watch some more Game of Thrones and enjoy our meal. But, Wait, huh? are we gonna have wine with it? Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, I made uh, my husband pull out a bottle of Pinot out of the uh, wine cellar, which is mostly a closet here. But we have this 2016 Hush Pinot from Anderson Valley. This is gonna pair really nicely with lamb. Uh, Pinot's kind of a thing with lamb. Um, we also have a, a Zen here that we've been uh, drinking that's already open, and this will be good too. So we can do either one of those. We have choices here at the cookhouse. So there you have it. Rack of lamb, some side. Thank you for watching Two Cooks in the Kitchen. <laughs> be sure to subscribe to our channel um, find us on Facebook with the number two, wait, number two, it's backwards, um, two cooks in the kitchen, and we'll see you next time.